Welcome to Learnpedia, the ultimate JE and NEET prep tool that is currently being used by over 20,000 aspirants. Now let's see if you can answer this actual JE question. If you think you got the answer, post it in the comment section below. To understand the concept behind this question, go ahead and watch this video. The next term we come across is coordination sphere or ionization sphere. Consider K4, FECN6, the one which is here placed in square brackets, that is FECN6, 4 minus, is the coordination sphere. That is, the central metal atom to which the ligands are attached form coordination sphere. And the potassium which is there outside the square bracket, which will come out in the form of ions as 4K+, plus, when put in water, is ionization sphere. So thereby, the central metal atom, that is iron, and the ligands that are directly attached to the central metal atom, collectively is termed as coordination sphere. And this coordination sphere is put in square bracket as shown here in ferrocyanide complex. Similarly, when we take Ag, NH3 taken twice, Cl. In this, this silver atom to which two Ammonia ligands are attached that is put in square bracket that is Ag NH3 taken twice whole plus. This which is put in the square bracket is a coordination sphere and the Cl that is there outside the square bracket which will come out in the form of ion when put in water is ionization sphere. Thus the central metal atom and the ligands which are directly attached to it are collectively called as coordination sphere and is written inside the square bracket as can be seen here in diamine silver 1 complex ion. This is the coordination sphere and this central metal atom and the ligands inside the square bracket behave as single entity and the part outside the bracket is called ionization sphere. The remaining part of the complex compound that is other than the coordination sphere that is placed outside the coordination sphere is called ionization sphere. What the difference between the two? So in the example CuNH3 4 SO4 the sulfate which is there outside the coordination sphere this part is ionization sphere. And the one which is there completely in the square bracket is called coordination sphere. And the sulphate which is present outside the square bracket is ionizable. And this which is there in the square bracket which acts as a single entity and is non-ionizable. And this copper metal is the central metal atom. And this ammonia groups which are there for are the ligands. Similarly, when we take another example as K2 NiCN4, this is potassium which is there outside the square bracket is ionization sphere and is ionizable. Whereas, what all is present inside the square bracket is coordination sphere and this nickel is the central metal atom. And the four cyanide groups which are attached to the central metal atom are ligands. And there being four cyanides which are directly attached to the central metal atom, four is the coordination number. In any chemical reaction, the number of equivalents of all reactants and products are equal. I repeat, in any chemical reaction, any two substances always react in the ratio of their equivalent weights. When I take the example of magnesium reacting with oxygen to give magnesium oxide, in terms of moles, we can write that 2 moles of magnesium is combining with 1 mole of oxygen in order to get 2 moles of magnesium oxide, isn't it? Then in terms of mass, we can write like this 2 into 24, that is 48 grams of magnesium combined with 32 grams of oxygen in order to give 2 into 40 
that is 80 grams of magnesium oxide. So if that is the case, what will be the equivalent masses of all these substances involved in this reaction? For the case of element, it is atomic mass divided by its valency. That is for magnesium 24 by 2, it becomes 12, isn't it? Then for the case of oxygen, its atomic mass is 16 divided by its valency 2, so it is 8. And for the case of magnesium oxide, that is an ionic compound, its equivalent mass is equal to formula mass, that is 40. Formula mass, that is 40, divided by total positive or negative charge, that is equal to 2. So we get 20 here. Now tell me, how can we get the number of equivalents of all these substances? And number of equivalence is equal to given mass upon equivalent mass. So 48 upon 12, this is equal to 4. And here 32 upon 8, this is also equal to 4. And 80 upon 20, this is also equal to 4. So what you had learned from here? In any chemical reaction, the number of equivalents of all the reactants and products are always the same. It's a very, very important concept where you'll be using under the chapter called redox reactions to work out very higher level objectives. Now, can we relate between the number of moles and the number of equivalents? As we can do that in this way. Number of moles is equal to the given weight divided by gram molecular weight, isn't it? Then, how can we calculate number of equivalents? The given weight divided by its gram equivalent weight. And we know that this gram equivalent weight is equal to gram molecular weight by X factor. Isn't it? So that is the reason if I write like this. Number of equivalents upon number of moles. What you will get? First write this expression. Given weight divided by gram molecular weight upon X. Then write this expression given weight divided by gram molecular weight. So what will be remaining here? These two will be cancelled out and this will be cancelled out. Finally we get number of equivalents is equal to number of moles multiplied by the X factor. So number of equivalents is equal to number of moles multiplied by the X factor. And what is this X factor? We had already learned it is the Basicity for the case of the acids, acidity for the case of the bases, it is the charge on the ions and the total positive or negative charges for the case of the ionic compounds. Hey there, hope you understood the concept. Here's the solution to the question asked at the beginning. Found this video useful? Hit the like and share icons to enjoy more such videos. Use the comment section below to post your feedback, queries or questions. Learnpedia's JE and NEED prep tools contain over 4,000 videos and over 20,000 questions. They are accessible online on our website and also offline through an SD card or a pen drive. To buy now, visit www.learnpedia.in. You can also try a free demo of our product before purchase.